So a lot of big cats have been let out of the bag with what has to do with the launch of certain aspects of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And the big event in Los Angeles where some online journals were brought out like Eurogamer, Games Informer, IGN, and other big content creators were all flown out to LA to experience the game hands-on and learn some new information to that they could share forward. And obviously I was not one of those content creators, but a friend of mine, Jay Shock Blast was. You can see the link to his full 30 minute video inside the description here, but he was gracious enough to allow me to use a couple of snippets of the video to talk about some of these points. As always, welcome back Deadites and Ghost Beaters. And if you're new to the channel, I am Old Head Gaming. And if you want to stay up to date on all the latest gaming news, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for all video game news. And we are going to be going on pretty heavy when it comes to Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League coming out January 30th in early access for deluxe edition or February 2nd for the standard edition. And there's a lot of cool stuff that we have found out over the last a uh, couple of hours. So the first thing I want to talk about is Poison Ivy. And here's a clip from Jay's video. And I did find it very enjoyable. Uh, the guns are really well made. Uh, I obviously used uh, Deadshot. So I used a lot of sniper rifles. He also had LMGs. Uh, there was a point where we went into that flash encounter where they prepped us. Uh, the whole playing experience was curated. You know, there was uh, obviously um, saves that they had specifically for uh, this experience. And um, their builds. I mean, that's something a lot of people are not under, not knowing or understanding quite yet, is you can actually make uh, builds for your characters. You can get specific types of guns that do certain damage types. Um, you know, Poison Ivy becomes a vendor along with the Penguin and I want to say the Tinkerer. Uh, they all have different things. And uh, Poison Ivy, what she does is she offers afflictions, uh, which basically can help you do um, ice damage or poison damage or fire damage or things of that nature. And, um, and, and Penguin does his thing. Um, there are definitely uh, different grades of weapons that you can acquire throughout. It is a looter shooter after all. Uh, what I will say that is very interesting is the weapons, uh, there's no like level. So like when you find a weapon, that's the weapon. All right. And it's just going to work with you, you know. So you're not constantly looking for a level oh, I got the level four version, let me get the level seven, let me get the level eight version. You have the confidence of knowing if in chapter three, you get this sick, um, like, I forget what they call it, like this purple level, um, the best level of rarity, uh, black mask gun sniper rifle that, that you can, that it's not going to be, you know, you're not going to have to throw it away after you level up a couple more times. So as you can see here, Poison Ivy is going to play a pretty significant role as the vendor that provides affixes for your weapon. So if you want to change the sniper rifle you have to fire damage or poison damage or ice damage, you go to Poison Ivy for that. And she's going to be one of three vendors. We already had known about Penguin. We had already known about Poison Ivy being reborn in this new version of herself. But we did not know about Tinkerer, so that is some new information we have learned as well. Second of all, another cool thing is we found out that weapons grow with you, so they're not hard locked to a weapon. So, for example, if I'm level three boomerang and I find an SMG I like, say it's not going to be a level five SMG. And as I level past it, it's me using this really good weapon that is no longer viable. The weapon is going to tier to my level. So if you find this amazing epic weapon, you can keep it as long as you want to use it and it will grade up with you. That is a huge sacrifice of time we will not have to make looking for that specific weapon we love, but at a different level. Oh, now I got to find the level seven version. Now I got to find the level 12 version, so on and so forth. If we find it, it's yours. It's going to be there. And the cool thing, as you can see behind me, they come in these weapon caches. Now, they're going to come out of rewards for missions in open world, which is apparently very, very large. It's going to come out of story missions. It's probably going to help you level as you go along the story mode and other missions that you partake in 
and events. So anything you do, you get a chance to get one of these caches. These caches then in turn allow you to get some sort of piece of loot or some piece of gear or maybe even a cosmetic. It has not been confirmed that that is not possibly a way they come as well. So obviously as Jay was talking in his video and we've seen in other things like Game Informer, it looks like Kill the Justice League is a literal determination. Now he said that he did not get to see the cutscene after they defeated the Flash and I think it's very interesting to see where this goes. If you're actually killing the Justice League members, oh well. Like, I think we kind of knew based on the title that that is a literal possibility. And everything from what Jay's saying is that it appears whatever Brainiac has done to the Justice League is irreversible. Like, whatever affliction they have contracted cannot be undone. And the only way to do once you defeat them is to put them down. Now, we don't know if Wonder Woman will ever be afflicted, we do know that Flash and Green Lantern are, but the only time we see Wonder Woman so far in any scene is when she throws a lasso at Harley and we don't know if she's possessed or not. The offline mode got a little more information on that. We know it's coming after launch. It wasn't something they could take away before the game hits in the end of the month. So what's gonna happen after a patch or two, one of those few first few patches will include the ability to go offline only. So this means you won't have to play online and sign into WB every time you load into the game. And if for some reason this game goes offline at some point, you'll still be able to play it in offline mode. Now, it won't unfortunately hit at launch, but a couple of patches in there is not gonna make any real difference. Another thing we learned from this early access that these content creators had is that we're going to earn future characters. We knew they were going to be free, but in what manner they came, it looks like they're going to be tied to some sort of event launching the new DLC characters. They are going to be completely free and you go through and do some sounds like a quest chain to get what you need from them and then unlock the new character to your roster. Another thing we found out, which was really interesting to me, is along with the offline mode, you can level your friend's characters. Now you're probably saying to yourself, how do I do that? As we know, it is a up to four man co-op. So if I'm playing during one of my live streams and you are a subscriber and want to join in with me, we're going to have plenty of time to swap people in and out. And we'll fill that four man group pretty quickly. Say, for example, I'm just doing some fun stuff off stream and I'm just playing a match real quick. I want to cut around a couple of missions in the open world. I could pick a few characters of my friends who are not actively playing the game and bring them into my game. At that point, whatever experience and loot they earn when they log back into their games they will receive that that is really cool so say for example you just don't want to play for a couple days you're doing other things you're out of town you could log back in and theoretically see your boomerang four levels higher in a sweet piece of gear like this is a really interesting thing that they're adding to the game and i'm excited to see how this works in practice because i don't think we've really ever experienced anything like this in a looter now we will be doing early access and I will probably just use my token on the first battle pass to see what it looks like and see what all's coming in it because why not seems like a good thing to do why wait because I don't know what if it's going to be any better or any worse than the future battle passes we'll be starting on January 30th in early access and we will be doing the 30th the 31st the first and then of course launch day of February 2nd so if you want to play some suicide squad with me make sure you drop in hit a sub on the channel so you know when I'm live and have a good time because this looks like a crazy fun game and I'm not worried about all the hate from people who are mad that it's not a Batman game and it's not set in Gotham and it's in a set in a completely different setting of Metropolis like I'm gonna enjoy the game for what it is and if you're not happy about that I'm sorry for your luck, but I do want to hear what your thoughts are on the game coming up. What about all this news that we have just learned? What about your thoughts on are you getting the normal version? Or are you going to get the early access with the deluxe? I want to hear it all. As always, thank you for watching and later, mates.